The Nikon DF looks a little different from your average DSLR on the market today. The control scheme is a cross between film SLRs from decades past and current day DSLRs. It's a bit of an adjustment if you're coming from using any of the more recent DSLRs. Some of the controls are dials on the top of the camera rather than buttons or menu options. But it's a quick adjustment and the camera is fun to use. Let me show you the body first and then we'll walk through the menus. Let's start with the front of the body. Here's the DF badge. This is the sub-command dial, which is how you adjust aperture. Here is the depth of field preview button, and this is the function button. You can set this button to do a few things, which I'll talk about when I get to the menu walkthrough. Here's where the lens goes. I've got the 50mm f1.8D lens here. This is the autofocus mode button and the focus mode selector. This is the lens release button. Here is the cap covering the flash sync terminal and the bracketing button. There are options in the menus for this too. And this is the self-timer lamp. It flashes when you're using the self-timer. On this side are some ports. Behind the doors are the USB connector, which you might use to connect the camera to your computer to transfer images. The HDMI mini pin connector. You can connect to an HD screen to view live view or a slideshow. And the accessory terminal. You might use this for a remote or a GPS unit. This side doesn't have anything on it. Moving to the bottom, in the middle is the tripod socket. On this side is a door. Behind the door is the memory card slot. The DF takes one SD card and the battery. There is also this small cover here. When you use the AC power adapter, you remove this cover for the cord to come out. On the top of the body, you can see the camera's strap eyelets and the hot shoe for a flash or sync cable. Over here is a dial on top of another dial. The ISO sensitivity dial is on the bottom. You press this button and the dial moves around from low one up to high four. On top of that dial is the exposure compensation dial. You press the button in the middle and you can apply exposure compensation from negative three to positive three EV. And then if you peek in here, you can see the focal plane mark. On this side is the shutter speed dial. You can turn this dial freely from one four thousandth of a second to four seconds. You have the option of using the main command dial. I'll show you on the back of the camera in a moment and I'll show you how to turn that option on in the menus too. You can also turn to one third step, which is where when you are in shutter priority or manual mode, shutter speed can be changed in one third step increments by rotating the main command dial from one four thousandth to 30 seconds. Now to turn the dial off of one third step or to turn it to X, T or B, you press the release button here. Now let me tell you what those three options are. X is for use in shutter priority or manual. The shutter speed will be set at the sync speed limit. T is time mode, where the exposure will begin when the shutter release button is pressed, then will remain open for 30 minutes or until the shutter release button is pressed again. And B is bulb mode, where the shutter remains open while the shutter release button is held down. Right here is the lever to change the release mode, which you can see here. You have single frame, continuous low. In the menus, you can choose for this to be one to five frames per second. Continuous high, quiet shutter release, self timer, which you can figure in the menus, and mirror up. Here is the on off switch and the shutter release button. In the middle of the shutter release button is the shutter socket, which is where an optional cable release would attach. Next to that is the exposure mode dial with program mode, shutter priority, aperture priority, and manual. You lift and turn to change between modes. Beneath that is a control panel, which will tell you a number of things about how the camera is set. Last up here is this little button, which illuminates the control panel and also is one of the two buttons that reset the camera's settings to default. I'll show you the second button in a minute. On to the back of the body. Down the middle is the viewfinder and diopter adjustment and the LCD screen. On the left is the playback button and the trash button. Down the side here is the menu button. The next three buttons do multiple things. First, the white balance slash help slash protect button. When the LCD screen is off, this button will bring up the white balance options on the LCD screen. When in the menus and you see a question mark icon at the bottom left corner of the screen, you can press this button to learn more about the function. And when in playback, it will protect an image from being deleted when using the trash button or the delete menu function. Next is the quality slash zoom in button. This will bring the image quality options up on the screen or when in playback, it will zoom into the photo. Then this is the flash slash zoom out button. When you press this and turn the main command dial, you can change the flash mode. Or when you press it and turn the sub command dial, you can dial in flash compensation. If you press this button when you are in playback, you will zoom out of an image or view thumbnails. This button also has the same green dot as the LCD illuminator button on the top of the camera, which means that it is the second button in the two button reset. When you press the two buttons for more than two seconds, 
you reset the camera settings to their defaults. Then last in this row is the first of two info buttons. This one will bring up the information display and allow you to make changes to some commonly used settings. This other info button will simply bring up lots of settings on the screen so you can see how the camera is set. Here is the live view button. This is the memory card access lamp. This will light up when the memory card is being accessed. Definitely don't take the card out while it is lit up. Here is the multi-selector, which is how you move through menu items and photos in playback. This is the focus selector lock. If you switch this to L, you lock the autofocus area. Above that is the metering selector, then the auto exposure lock slash autofocus lock button. You can set how this behaves in the menus. And this is the autofocus on button. Last is the main command dial. Okay, that's all for the DF body. Now let's get into the menus. You have six menus along the left side here. Let's start with the playback menu where you manage the images on your camera. The first item on the list is delete, but it only shows up if you have images on the card. Otherwise, it's grayed out. You can delete images by selecting individual photos, you can select by date, or you can choose to delete all of the photos on the card. Of course, you can also delete images one by one in playback with the trash can button. The next item is playback folder, where you choose which images show up when you hit the playback button on your camera. You can either have all images created with the DF visible during playback, images in all of the folders on the memory card visible, or only pictures in the current folder visible. Hide image allows you to hide specific images during playback. This will hide images during playback. They won't show up when you scroll through the images you've taken. You might like to use this if you are doing a slideshow and want to not show some images. I'll show you the slideshow option in a minute. You've got set select here to select individual images to hide or select date to select by date. You can also deselect all. Next is playback display options. Here you decide how images are displayed on the screen during playback. When you are in playback, you can view your image on several screens with different information using playback by pressing up and down on the multi-selector. You can see your image alone. You can see varying amounts of information like the focus point or highlights. You customize how many of these different information screens you can scroll through on each image. The default is to have an overview screen. The next option is a yes or no question. Do you want image review on or off? Image review is where the image shows up on your screen after you take the photo. Now, what do you want to happen after you delete an image? If you are in playback and you use the trash can button to delete an image, you can have the camera show the next image, show the previous image, or continue as before, where the camera will look at the last thing you did and do that again. Rotate tall is an on or off answer. Do you want the images showing on the screen to be rotated to be right side up if it was taken in the portrait orientation? Next is slideshow. This is where you can put on a slideshow on the LCD screen of your camera or when you're plugging it into a larger screen using a cable. Your first option is to start the show and you can choose the frame interval, meaning how long each image is displayed. Last is DPOF print order. DPOF stands for digital print order format. This option allows you to choose images to print if you connect your camera to a printer or plug the memory card into a printer. Keep in mind though that only printers that are compatible with the picked bridge standard will be able to do this. You can check your photo printer's documentation to see if it is picked bridge compatible. Here you select photos individually and determine the number of prints. The information on how to do this is at the bottom of the screen. In this case, you press the zoom out button and the up or down arrow at the same time to select or change the number of prints. Now on to the shooting menu. Shooting menu bank is first. You have four banks here. Each of the banks store a combination of options within the shooting menu. You can set each bank up to hold a different collection of settings so that you can select that bank and your camera will be set to that collection all at once. There are a few options that are not included in the banks and I'll mention those as we go through the menu. So you can choose your shooting menu bank here, but you can also rename the banks here. Now, you set up the shooting menu bank simply by highlighting the bank you want to change and then going through the shooting menu and making selections. You don't have to specify that you want them to be in the bank, they will automatically be saved there. You can also choose the bank to use on the info screen. Our next option is storage folder. This is where our images are stored on the memory card. You can select a folder by number or select a folder from a list. Selecting a folder from a list lists the folders already available on the card. Selecting a folder by number allows you to create a new folder. Next is file naming. The default on Nikon cameras is for the file to start with DSC then underscore, then four numbers. Or if you're shooting in Adobe RGB, underscore DSC numbers, but you can change the letters here. Next we have image quality and image size. You have many options for image quality here. You can shoot three different file types, JPEG, TIFF, and RAW. And then you have options within those. You can simply shoot in RAW, 
you can shoot in TIFF, then there are JPEG options, basic, normal, or fine. Or you can shoot a combination of RAW and JPEG, RAW plus JPEG basic, normal, or fine, where both files will be written to the memory card. These are items that you can also change by using the zoom in slash quality button on the back of the camera and turning the main command dial. Now in image size, you have small, medium, or large. Image area is next. There are two items here. Let's take a look at choose image area first. This is where you choose how much of the sensor to utilize. You can use the full sensor in FX, or you can use a part of the sensor in DX, which is 1.5X. Now we can look at auto DX crop. On Nikon FX cameras, you can use Nikon DX lenses. By turning on auto DX crop, the DF will automatically switch to DX mode when a DX lens is affixed. Let's talk about image quality, image size, and image area for a second. I'm not going to get into the debate on RAW versus JPEG or FX versus DX. What I do want to talk to you about is photo editing and file size. When choosing your image quality, image size, and image area, please keep in mind two things. One, the file size that you're creating and how much space is on your memory card that you have with you and how you plan to store all the images at home. And two, how do you plan to edit the images? Not all image editing programs will edit RAW files, so make sure that you are equipped to edit the files that you are creating. The next two options are for file compression, where we again are balancing the size and quality of our images. Here is JPEG compression, where you decide how the camera is going to compress the JPEG images you write to the memory card. You can choose size priority, where the camera tries to make all of the images about the same size, or you can choose optimal quality, where the file sizes are different, but the camera tries to figure out the best quality for each individual image. And here is NEF, or RAW, recording. You have three options under type. You can choose lossless compressed, where the images are compressed without any effect on image quality, compressed, where the images are compressed more, but with little effect on image quality, or uncompressed, where the files are not compressed at all. Then under NEF or RAW bit depth, you can choose 12-bit or 14-bit. Now for white balance, you have nine main choices here. You choose which of these best describes your lighting situation and even fine tune the color balance, or you can choose auto, where the camera will try to figure out what color temperature to use, or you can actually enter in a specific color temperature in Kelvin, or you can set preset manual, where you can take a photo of a neutral gray or white object, like a gray card, and set the white balance off of that. Or you can copy a white balance from an existing photo on the memory card. You can also change white balance by pressing the white balance slash help slash protect button and turning the main command dial. The next option is picture control. Here you choose how the camera will record how the photo looks with regard to sharpness, contrast, brightness, saturation, and hue. Standard is your all-around setting. In neutral, the camera does limited processing and will give natural looking results. This setting is good if you're going to be doing a lot in post-processing. Vivid will enhance the primary colors. In monochrome, your images will be recorded in black and white. Next is portrait, which focuses on skin tones. And last is landscape, which enhances the reds and greens. Now you can fine tune these options. For example, in monochrome, you can change sharpening, contrast, and brightness. And you can also apply filter effects and toning. You can also quickly access the picture control options on the info screen. I have two quick notes here on white balance and picture control. Note number one, both of these alter the colors of the image. However, if you are shooting in RAW, you will see the altered image on your LCD screen in playback or in image review, but the original color information is being recorded and you will be able to access it in post-processing. Note number two, remember how I said that some of the items in the shooting menu aren't included in the shooting menu banks? White balance and picture control are included in the bank settings, but there is a catch. Any fine tuning of the white balance or picture control setting that you choose will not be saved specifically for that bank. In other words, if you're in bank A and fine tune the incandescent white balance setting, then move to bank B and change that fine tuning, when you go back to bank A, it isn't going to revert to the first fine tuning that you did. You're changing the fine tuning across the board. There is one way around that though. Let's talk about it now. The next option is manage picture control. Here you can edit each of the picture control options or you can create a new picture control. If you go to save edit, you can choose from your existing picture controls and fine tune from there. This fine tunes the settings just as we did in the picture control option from before. But the other option I have available is load save. Here I am able to bring in any new picture controls that I have saved on my memory card. 
This is handy if you set up a custom picture control on another camera and you want to put it on one of your other cameras. Now here's where you can work around having fine tuning in one shooting menu bank and not in another. You can create and store a new picture control for it. Color space is next. You have two options, sRGB and Adobe RGB. I use sRGB. Next is active delighting, where the camera helps bring out detail in highlights and shadows when you're in high contrast situations. You have auto, extra high two, extra high one, high, normal, low, and off. High dynamic range is next on the menu. This is where the camera will combine two exposures to create one image, but this option cannot be used when shooting in RAW. You do have options here. First, you must choose your HDR mode, off, on series, where HDR will remain on until you go in and choose off, or on single photo, where HDR will be on only for one image. Next, you choose your exposure differential. You can choose auto or one, two, or three EV. Then you must choose the amount of smoothing. This smooths the area between the two images. You can choose normal, low, or high. Vignette control helps to lessen any darkening at the edges of your image. This option only works with type G, E, and D FX lenses. You can choose high, normal, low, or off. Do you want auto distortion control on or off? This option reduces barrel and pin cushion distortion in photos taken with certain types of lenses. This option only works with type G, E, and D lenses. And if you choose on, be cautious when using a DX lens. Make sure your camera is set to only use the DX portion of the sensor. You might end up with a mess if you don't. Next is long exposure noise reduction. This option will reduce the noise in your image when shooting with a shutter speed of slower than one second. It may slow your frame rate and the buffer will fill up more quickly. Next is high ISO noise reduction. This will reduce the amount of noise in photos where you are using high ISO sensitivities. Here you have high, normal, low, and off. Next is auto ISO sensitivity settings. Now you can set the ISO sensitivity using the dial on the top of the camera, but you can also set it from a list here. You can also have the camera decide which ISO sensitivity is best for your given situation. You choose on or off, but you can also set parameters on this if you turn it on. You can set the maximum ISO sensitivity you want, meaning that the camera won't use anything higher, and you can also set the minimum shutter speed. One of your options here is auto, or you can choose a specific shutter speed. The next menu item is multiple exposure. You have the option to capture multiple exposures in one shot. Here we can choose off, on series, where this will remain on until you go in and choose off, or on single photo, where it will be on to create only one multiple exposure image. Next, you choose the number of shots, anywhere between 2 and 10. You physically have to press the shutter release that number of times to complete your multiple exposure, but you can use this in conjunction with the interval timer, which I'll explain in a minute, and have the camera release the shutter for you. And then you choose auto gain to be on or off, if you choose on, gain will be adjusted according to the number of exposures you choose to be captured for each image. If you chose three exposures, gain would be one third. A couple of notes though, you cannot use this in live view and this is one of the items that you cannot save in your shooting menu banks. This option is on or off no matter which bank you are in. Multiple exposure is similar to HDR because both of them can be used to expand the dynamic range of your image. However, where HDR is flipping the mirror up once, taking two exposures quickly, and then stitching them together into one HDR image, multiple exposure is laying all of the images that you've taken separately on top of one another. For that reason, multiple exposure can also be used to capture things like light trails of stars or the colorful trail of leaves floating on a stream. Interval timer shooting is next. This option is similar to a self timer, except that it will take multiple photos at set intervals, which you get to determine here. You will choose the start time, be it now or a specific time in the future, how much time in between intervals, you can choose hours, minutes, and or seconds, the number of shots per interval, and the number of intervals. This is another option that can't change by shooting menu bank. Next is the custom settings menu. It is a large menu that is broken down into seven sections. But first is custom settings bank. This is just like the shooting menu bank, but for options in the custom settings menu. You can choose the bank here or on the info screen. The first section is A, autofocus. The top two options here are regarding how the camera reacts when you press the shutter release button and it can't find focus. In AFC priority selection, you determine what happens when in continuous shooting. You have two options. You can choose release where the camera will take a photo regardless of if it can find focus, or you can choose focus where you can only take photos when they are in focus. The related option is AFS priority selection. 
for when you are in single frame shooting. You have the same two options, release and focus. The next option down is focus tracking with lock on. This only applies when you are in continuous autofocus or AFC. This is how the camera reacts if the subject suddenly moves a large amount, either toward the camera or away. The idea is that if something comes through the frame, the camera won't get confused by it and try to focus on it instead of your subject. You can choose how long the camera will wait to refocus, or you can have it off. The next option is AF activation. If you choose shutter slash AF on, the camera will autofocus when half pressing the shutter release button or the AF on button. If you choose AF on only, the camera will only autofocus when you press the AF on button, but not when you half press the shutter release button. Now for AF point illumination. The idea here is to make sure that you are able to see your autofocus point in the viewfinder. You have three options. First, you can choose auto, where your selected autofocus point is highlighted in red when the camera thinks it needs to be. Then you have on, where your selected autofocus point is always highlighted in red. And then you have off, where the selected autofocus point is never highlighted. Next is focus point wraparound. When you are moving through your focus points using your multi-selector, do you want to be stopped at the edge or do you want the focus point to come out the opposite side? How many focus points do you want? You can choose 39 points or 11 points. 39 points is great if you have time to move through them, but 11 is for those times when you need to move that focus point around quickly. Now for section B, metering slash exposure. The first menu item is center weighted area. Here you choose how your camera calculates exposure when using center weighted metering. You choose the diameter of the circle in the center of the frame, 8 millimeters, 12, 15, or 20. Or you can choose average, which averages the entire frame. Next is fine tune optimal exposure. As the name suggests, you are able to fine tune the exposure value the camera selects. When you go here, you get an alert. The exposure compensation icon will not be displayed when exposure is altered from the default value. Okay, now you see your three options. They are your metering modes, matrix metering, center weighted metering, and spot metering. You can adjust these in steps of 1 6th EV from plus 1 to negative 1 EV. Let's talk about this one for a moment because I have a couple of notes for you on this option. Remember that alert that we saw? I said that the exposure compensation icon will not be displayed when exposure is altered from the default value. This means that if you set the fine tuning, your camera isn't going to tell you anywhere but in this menu that you have adjusted the exposure. Now if you go in and use the exposure compensation button to adjust exposure while you're shooting, that will still show up in the, all the regular places, but it isn't going to add in the fine tuning. Also, I wanted to note that you should pay attention to which custom settings bank you're in when adjusting the fine tuning because you can save a different value for each bank. Needless to say, this option has the potential to confuse the you-know-what out of you, so use it with caution. Now we have section C, timers slash AE lock. The first option on this section of the menu is shutter release button AEL, and your options are on or off. If you select on, the exposure will lock when the shutter release button is half pressed. If you select off, exposure will continue to adjust until the photo is taken. Next is standby timer, where you can set how long the camera meters exposure when you aren't actually doing anything. You have options ranging from 4 seconds to 30 minutes, and you also have no limit where it is always on. Keep in mind that keeping the meter on for a long while while not in use is going to eat up the battery life. And now for self timer. You can turn the self timer on on the release mode dial up here, but you can configure it in this menu option. You set the delay, or how long the camera waits between pressing the shutter release button and when it takes the actual photo. You choose the number of shots it will take. You can have up to nine. And then you have the interval between shots, between a half second and three seconds. The last item in this section of the menu is monitor off delay. Here you choose how long your LCD screen will stay on when no operation is being performed. There are several reasons why you use your LCD screen and you can set each one separately. You have playback, menus, information display, imagery view, and live view. Just like with auto meter off delay, you'll want to choose shorter durations if you're interested in conserving battery life. Now for D, shooting slash display. The first item is beep. The camera can beep at you when it does certain things, like when it finds focus in single servo autofocus. Do you want it to beep, and how loud? Viewfinder display grid is either on or off. If it's on, you'll see grid lines in your viewfinder. ISO display is an on or off question. If you choose on, you will see the ISO sensitivity in the viewfinder instead of the number of exposures remaining. 
Next is screen tips. If you choose on, tips will be shown on the info screen when an item is selected. Next is continuous low mode shooting speed. This is the maximum number of frames per second you can capture in continuous low. You can choose from one to five frames per second. Next is max continuous release. The maximum number of shots that can be taken in a single burst in continuous mode. You can choose any number between one and 100. File number sequence determines how your files are numbered. When you choose on, the file is numbered by adding one to the last number used or the largest file number in the current folder, whichever is higher. When you get to 9999, the camera begins again at 0001. If you choose off, file numbering is reset every time a new folder is created, the memory card is formatted, or a new memory card is inserted. Last, if you choose reset, the file is numbered by adding one to the largest file number in the current folder. If the folder is empty, the file numbering starts at 0001. Information display is next, where you choose how the display will appear. You can choose auto, where the color of the screen and lettering are determined automatically, or you can choose manual, where you have two options, either dark letters on a light screen or light letters on a dark screen. Next is LCD illumination. If you choose on, the control panel will be illuminated whenever the exposure meters are active. If you choose off, the panel will only be illuminated when you press the light bulb button. Exposure delay mode. You can set the camera to have a slight delay in releasing the shutter after the mirror is raised. The purpose of this is to have the camera on a tripod and be able to press the shutter release button and let the camera go while the mirror flips up to eliminate any camera shake. Now for section E, bracketing slash flash. The first option is flash sync speed for when a compatible speed light or other flash is attached. You have two different auto options here, 1 250th and 1 200th. When in aperture priority or program mode, these allow a compatible flash unit to be used at the highest shutter speed that the camera can, which then allows you to use the maximum aperture available to achieve a narrower depth of field. This becomes especially important when your subject is backlit. You also have options ranging from 1 200th of a second to 1 60th of a second for flash sync speed. Next is flash shutter speed. This allows you to set the slowest shutter speed available when you are using front or rear curtain sync or red eye reduction in program mode or aperture priority. You can choose between 1 60th of a second to 30 seconds. If you put a flash unit on your camera, optional flash will appear. You are able to choose TTL for the camera to determine the amount of flash needed or manual for you to set the flash power. Exposure compensation for flash is where you choose how the camera is going to adjust the flash power when exposure compensation is being used. You can have both the flash level and the exposure compensation adjusted over the entire frame, or you can have the exposure compensation applied to the background only. Next is modeling flash, which you can set to on or off. When you choose on and a flash that supports CLS is on the camera, a modeling flash will appear when the camera depth of field preview button is pressed. Auto bracketing set has a few options. You can choose which settings are bracketed when auto bracketing is in effect. You can choose auto exposure and flash, auto exposure only, flash only, white balance bracketing, this isn't available if you are shooting in RAW, or active delighting bracketing. This next option is only available if you set auto bracketing to auto exposure and flash or to auto exposure only and you are in manual exposure mode. It is auto bracketing mode M. Here you determine which settings are affected. You can choose flash slash speed where the camera will vary the shutter speed if you are set to auto exposure only or shutter speed and flash if you are set to auto exposure and flash. You also have flash slash speed slash aperture where the camera will vary shutter speed and aperture in auto exposure only and adds flash when set to auto exposure and flash. You can set to flash slash aperture where the camera will vary aperture in auto exposure only and aperture and flash level in auto exposure and flash. Lastly, you have flash only where the camera varies flash level only, which is only applicable if you are set to auto exposure and flash. The last item in this section is bracketing order. Here you determine the order in which the camera brackets. You can have it shoot where the camera is metered, then under, then over, or you can have it shoot low to high. Now to section F, controls. First is the light bulb. You can set what you want to happen when the light bulb button is pressed. You can have just the control panel light up, or you can have the control panel and the info screen light up. Now for OK button, where you can decide how the OK button behaves during different times. 
First, you can choose what it does during shooting mode, which is when you are using a viewfinder to take photos. You can have it send the focus point to the center, you can have it highlight the active focus point, or you can have it do nothing. Next, you can decide what it does during playback mode, which is when you're viewing your photos on your LCD screen. You can have it switch your view from full frame to thumbnail and back, you can have it display a histogram while the button is pressed, you can have it zoom, or you can have it display the folders that you can view in playback. Last, you can set how the center button will behave in live view. You can have it send the focus point to the center, you can have it zoom in on the selected focus point, or you can have the button be inactive. Multi-selector is next. Here you can turn on Restart Standby Timer, where pushing anywhere on the multi-selector will activate the exposure meters and start the standby timer. If Do Nothing is selected, the exposure meters and timer won't be activated. Now we have a Sign Function button. Here we get to decide what the function button will do. We can set either to have the button do something when we press it, or when we press it and rotate a command dial. Let's start with just the button press. You have lots of options here. You can have the button act as a depth of field preview button, or lock flash value. You can have it lock focus and exposure while the button is held down, or you have three options for locking exposure only. It can lock focus while the button is pressed, it can initiate autofocus, or you can set it to turn the flash off while the button is pressed. It can be set to activate a bracketing burst, or you can have the camera record a raw image in addition to the JPEG image if the button is pressed or the next three activate a specific metering mode while the button is pressed. You can also set it to turn a grid on in your viewfinder, or set it to turn on a virtual horizon in the viewfinder, or you can have it access your My Menu, or you can have it access the top menu item in your My Menu, or you can have the button behave as a playback button, or you can have the button do nothing. Now to the options for pressing the function button and rotating a command dial. You can press the button and rotate a command dial to choose the image area. You can set it to choose a lens number of a non-CPU lens. You can also have it adjust active delighting. You can have it choose an HDR mode when used with the main command dial, and exposure differential when used with the subcommand dial. It can turn auto ISO sensitivity on or off. When used with the main command dial, it can choose the multiple exposure mode and then the number of exposures with the subcommand dial. Or of course, you can have the button do nothing. Next, you can assign preview button which is just above the function button on the front of the camera. The options here are the same as the options for the function button, so we won't go through them again. The next menu option is assign auto exposure lock slash auto focus lock button. The options for this button are almost the same as the previous two. A couple of the options aren't available. Again, we won't go through it again. Now for customizing the command dials, where you can decide how the sub command dial and main command dial work. You can set them to reverse rotation, where you reverse the direction that you turn the dials, you can also have the dials swap places, or just change places when in aperture priority. You can also decide if aperture is to be adjusted using the sub-command dial or the aperture ring on the lens, if it has one. Last, you can set the camera to allow you to use the command dials to navigate through the menus and playback, or in menus and playback except image review. The next menu item is release button to use dial. This is a simple on or off. Do you want to have to hold down buttons like the mode button and the white balance button while turning dials to make adjustments, which is no, or would you rather be able to release the button and still make changes by rotating the dials until the meter turns off or the shutter release is pressed halfway, which is yes. Now what do you want to happen when you forget to put a memory card in the camera? Do you want the camera to lock up and not release the shutter, or do you want it to allow the shutter to release? Next is reverse indicators. The default is for your exposure indicator to be low on the left, high on the right. However, you can flip it. Last in this section is easy shutter speed shift. If this is on, the main command dial can be used to adjust shutter speed in increments of 1 3rd EV to plus minus 2 thirds EV. If the shutter speed dial is set to 4 seconds though, you will be able to select shutter speeds as slow as 30 seconds. Now into the setup menu. Format memory card only shows up if you have a card in the camera, otherwise it disappears. This is where the card can be formatted, meaning everything on it will be erased. Next is monitor brightness. This sets the brightness for your LCD screen on the back of your camera. Auto info display is next. If you choose on, shooting information will be displayed on the monitor after the shutter release button is half pressed and released. Clean image sensor is the next option. You can choose to clean now, or you have several options under clean at startup slash shutdown. You can have the camera automatically clean the sensor at startup, at shutdown, at startup and shutdown, 
or you can choose cleaning off where the camera will not automatically clean the image sensor. Lock mirror up for cleaning is for when you wish to manually clean your image sensor. When you press OK to start, the mirror will lock up so that you can physically get to the sensor. Image dust off reference photo is for use with Capture NX2, Nikon's photo editing software. It acquires reference information for the dust off feature in the software. Flicker reduction has a few options. You can choose auto, 50 hertz, or 60 hertz. This option will reduce flicker and banding when shooting under fluorescent or mercury vapor lighting during live view. Next is time zone and date. This is where you set the camera's internal clock. You set the time zone and date and time, the date format, and if you want the camera to adjust for daylight savings time. Language is where you choose the language you will see in your menus and messages. Auto image rotation can be on or off. When on is selected, the orientation of the camera will be recorded in the photo information so that when you open the image in most photo editing software, the image will be right side up. Image comment is next. You can add a comment to photos as they are taken. The comment is recorded in the metadata of the image. You type out the comment in input comment and actually tell the camera to attach it to all subsequent images by checking off attach comment. In copyright information, you can add copyright information to the metadata of your images. You input the information here and then you check the attach box to attach the information to all subsequent photos. Save slash load settings is next. You can share how you have your DF set up with other DFs using this feature. I won't go through the entire list in this video, but many of your menu settings will be saved to the memory card using Save Settings. Then you can insert the memory card into a different DF, click Load Settings, and the settings will be applied. In Virtual Horizon, roll and pitch information is displayed on the LCD screen. Non-CPU lens data is next. You can store data for up to nine non-CPU lenses here. You choose a number for the lens data, you input the focal length and the maximum aperture. Now, if you want to use this stored data when using the non-CPU lens, you have to assign a button slash dial combination on your camera to do so. Autofocus fine tune is the next item in the menu. Here you can fine tune focus for up to 12 lens types. Your options here are turning the fine tuning on and off. You save the value for the current lens here. You can choose values between positive 20 and negative 20. And you choose the default value here, which is the value when no fine tuning is applied. And then there is a list of saved values. I don't have any saved values, so this option is grayed out. Next is HDMI. This is where you control the resolution to the output device. You can also have the TV's remote control the slideshow if you turn device control on. Location data is for an optional GPS unit. You can set up how it behaves here. Assign remote function button is for the optional remotes. You set up how the function buttons on those remotes behave here. Wireless transmitter is again only applicable if you are using an optional wireless transmitter. This is where you would set up your options for connecting with smart devices. The last item on the setup menu is firmware version. This simply tells you which firmware version is on your DF. This is also where you would update your firmware. Next is the retouch menu. This is only available if there are images on the memory card. If you don't, this section will be grayed out. You can edit images in the camera though, then a JPEG copy with the edits will be saved on the card. Let me show you the edits you can make. There is D-lighting, just like active D-lighting, which we discussed earlier, but you apply it after the photo has been taken. Red-eye correction, this is only available in photos taken with flash, and the camera will detect where the correction is needed and apply it for you. Trim is where you can crop a photo. You have options for the aspect ratio. For example, you can create an 8x10 crop if you'd like. In monochrome, you create a black and white image, but you have options like sepia as well. In filter effects, you have the option of applying these filter effects. Then you have color balance, where you can modify the colors of an image and see the results on red, green, and blue histograms. In image overlay, you can overlay two raw images, selecting the transparency of each to create a new image. This option is an exception to the JPEG copy rule because you can actually save a raw version of your overlay image. Raw processing. Here you can edit raw files for image quality and size, white balance, exposure compensation, picture control, high ISO noise reduction, color space, vignette control, and delighting, and then save a JPEG copy. In quick retouch, saturation and contrast will be increased, and delighting will be applied. You can choose a level of application, though. You can straighten an image, or apply distortion control, which helps with peripheral distortion, both barrel and pin cushion distortion. Then there's fisheye, where you can decide the amount of the fisheye effect to be applied. In color outline, the camera creates an outline image, which you can then use like a coloring book.
Color Sketch creates what appears to be a sketch of your image. In Perspective Control, you can reduce the effects of perspective, particularly the narrowing perspective when you take a photo of a tall object. Miniature Effect creates what appears to be a miniaturized version of your image, as though it were a diorama. In Selective Color, you can choose the color which appears while the rest of the image is monochrome. The last menu we have on the DF is Recent Settings slash My Menu. The default is for this to be Recent Settings, where it will simply show you the menu items you've recently accessed. However, you can head down to Choose Tab and choose for this menu to be a My Menu instead. In My Menu, you can choose your most used menu items and arrange them in one list so that you can access them quickly. And that's all! That's the Nikon DF's body and its menus. If you need to reference back to sections of this video, but don't want to watch the whole thing again, there is a link in the description of this video. It will take you to snapcheck.com where I have put separate links for each of this video's parts. You'll also be able to find my lightning fast review of the Nikon DF and you will soon find my in-depth review of it. Now the DF may not be the same as other cameras on the market today. It's a bit of a misfit with its throwback dials and aesthetics, but it's super fun to use and really quite flexible. You can shoot it in manual mode with manual focus and make use of those dials like back in the day, or you can take advantage of the technology and use a mode like aperture priority and use autofocus. Even set the camera to behave and even be used more like its contemporaries. It's up to you.